First from his talks with President Eisenhower, Soviet Premier Khrushchev spans the globe to be the guest of Red China's aggressive Mao Zedong at Beiping, a meeting ostensibly to help Mao and his commissars celebrate the 10th anniversary of the communist subjugation of mainland China. Between the talks of the two powerful communist world leaders, Mao treats his visitor to a glimpse of Red China's military might. A parade of Soviet-supplied T-34 tanks featuring the turnout. However, the civilians celebrate with nothing more truculent than flowers, but they're impressive in numbers. A massing of manpower while the world ponders. Will the K Mao talks further the thaw in the Cold War started by Ike and K at Washington? Dr. T. Keith Glennon, center of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, with Vice President Tom Morrow and other experts as guides, inspects the progress of the Man in Space Project near Detroit, seeing that even the capsules that will carry the space adventurers are coming off the assembly line. Scenes at the Chrysler Corporation Michigan Ordnance Missile Plant, where Dr. Glennon also inspects a scale model of the Redstone Mercury missile that it is hoped will place the first human being in orbit. Here, too, he sees the capsule interior, with the relationship of the man for space and the larder which will sustain him on his venture plainly established, arguing that soon there'll be a yank on the moon. A movie tone survey from the sky reveals a vast area in Oklahoma underwater, Floods in the wake of nearly a week of torrential rains. Thousands homeless in the region. And the surging of waters from overrunning rivers spreading depths that inundate highways throughout the area, submerging many vehicles. The rains were accompanied by tornadoes. And as these pictures are released, the death toll of the predatory combination stands at six. One missing, 65 injured. Property damage widespread. In front of a newspaper stall in Paris, we glimpse a girl in a pushed back turban bonnet of black velvet, good with a pearl necklace and good with a wrist length astrakhan jacket. Cloth coats with fur collars are big news this year, and Jacques Heim shows one with a badger collar, a fine foil for a tiny pillbox hat. Sometimes it's too warm for a top coat. But it's never too warm to think of mink. And the mink in the window is something for Mademoiselle to think about. Her dress is mid-calf in length and has an easy-going silhouette. Another cloth coat with fur trimming. The material is tweed. The fur, black fox in a very large and very becoming collar. Formal clothes are sumptuous. And the materials run the gamut from lustrous satins to bold printed silks in floral patterns, from metal brocade to alluring velvet. Another capacity crowd jams Chicago's Comiskey Park for the second game of the 1959 World Series as Johnny Padres faces his first crisis. A first inning situation with two on base converted into a minor tragedy when Big Flu smash scores Aparicio and advances Landis. A single by Lala then suggests a repetition of yesterday's Dodger defeat as Landis scores to give the Sox a two-run lead. However, with a score of 2-1 in the seventh, Bob Shaw is tapped for a tying homer by Asidjan, pinch hitting for Padres. Neal, who hit a homer in the fifth, blocks out another one as his long ball goes into the bullpen. Gilliam bringing in the tying run, and Neal with what subsequently proves the margin of victory. Sherry taking over the mound assignment for the Dodgers in the seventh is tapped for a double by Smith, scoring Torgerson. But a fast relay from Moon to Wills to Roseborough finds Lawler a victim of bad strategy. Dodgers win 4-3, series even. 
92,294 fans at Los Angeles roar as the third game sets up its tingling thrills. The first when Staley, substituting for Donovan, the three on, faces reigning Carl Perillo, who waxes with a double that scores Neal and Locker for the runs that give the Dodgers the series edge. Number two thrill starts in the top of the eighth on Lawler's single that sends Big Clue to second, creating a Dodger dilemma, which manager Alston takes by the horns by sending Sherry to the mound. The relief hero starting off badly by Nicky Goodman on the knee to fill the bases. The record series crowd tenses to the drama, mounting to a climax, reached by a double play as Clue scores. The number three spine tingler comes with a Dodger security bid, starting with Will Single. Sherry contributes a sacrificial bump that advances Wills to second. Now Neal, the series hero to date, double scoring Wills. Dodgers three, Sox one, and the shame of the first game is avenged.